President Bola Ahmed Tinubu unveils broad plan to ease the cost of living pain in Nigeria. Tonight, we discuss the major highlights of his recent broadcast and reactions that have followed. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the president of Nigeria, in his speech to the nation at 7 p.m. yesterday, announced a series of measures aimed at fulfilling his campaign promises and easing hardships for Nigerians. According to him, over one trillion naira was saved from fuel subsidy payments, which will be channeled into providing student loans for higher education, ensuring that no Nigerian student has to abandon their studies due to financial constraints. President Tinubu, in his speech, also acknowledged the current challenges, but expressed confidence in the effectiveness of his proposed measures to improve the country's economy and citizens' well-being. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Labour Congress has expressed dissatisfaction with the promises dished out by the president in his national broadcast speech, saying it maligns the hardships of Nigerians. Well, joining us to discuss this is Upunabo Inko Tare. He's a public affairs analyst. Biadun Shoumi, who's a political analyst, and Tunji Abdulhamid, who's a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening. Let's start by looking at Mr. President's opener. I'm going to allow us to just listen to what he said. A lot of reactions, like I said at the beginning, have trailed Mr. President's um, broadcast. But then many people actually seem to appreciate the fact that the president did sympathize with Nigerians and, of course, seem to understand the pain that we are all facing. Let's take a listen to uh, that bit of his opening address. My fellow citizens, I want to talk to you about our economy. It is important that you understand the reasons for the policy measures I've taken to combat the serious economic challenges this nation had long faced. I'm not going to talk in difficult terms by dwelling on economic jargon and concepts. I will speak in plain, clear language so that you know where I stand. More importantly, so that you see and hopefully will share my vision regarding the journey to a better, more productive economy for our beloved country. Many would say that um, this is a departure from the previous administration where many Nigerians begged the president to speak, especially at a time where they needed to hear his voice the most. I'll start with you, Mr. Shomi. Um, looking at Mr. President's approach and the opener, of course, many would say, like I said, um, he seemed to understand the plight of Nigerians. But what are your thoughts? Is it enough to say that you understand um, as opposed to letting the people see um, what you are saying as opposed to just saying it? Oh, yes. Um, what we've seen with... Um <clears throat> President um, Bola Tinubu, um, is, we've seen a clear departure from the past, from the recent past, where um, the president of the country uh, hardly bothers to address Nigerians when we are facing challenges or very difficult situations which people fail to comprehend. And we've had a situation where government, you know, then turned a blind eye, showed, you know, I regard, disregard you know, for the feelings of the people. But what we've seen with Tinubu's remark, which many people actually agree, is that we've seen a leader who appears to be very compassionate, who empathizes with the people, who feels the pain that they feel, even though he is not the one that presided over, you know, the the economic downturns. Uh, for instance, um, um, the the last administration inherited ten trillion naira worth of debt, and then ended up borrowing 67 trillion naira in, in eight years, you know, uh, taking the debt, you know, to over to about 80 trillion now, which the country is owing. And that is one of the major reasons strangulating the economy. And the fact that currently we pay 70% of our, um, sorry, 96% of our internal and external earnings to service debt, you know, leave us with no option other than to, 
uh, look for other means of raising revenue. And that is what government has done by removing subsidy. So, and Tinubu seems to, you know, to, to be in tune with the feelings of the people. We understand the need that we have to, you know, focus on issues, focus on how to alleviate the plight of the people while at the same time providing a long supper. And that is what he has tried to do by coming out with his own policies on education, uh, clearly to make sure that no one would be deprived of being able to go to school on account of not having money. Then he focused on transportation too, uh, which is to ensure that they manage to uh, have um, CNG gases, you know, gas running uh, powered buses, so that um, uh, the cost of transportation can be brought down. And at the same time, uh, looking at agriculture to bring down the cost of food, uh, which is okay. basically um, uh, very important, is very essential. Okay. When you release two 100,000 metric tons of grains from the National Reserve. You're talking of about maize and rice. That will go a long way to stabilize the price, while at the same time, um, it's pledging to pumping over 200 billion, you know, into agriculture with a view to increase productivity. Okay. And doing this will provide a sustainable, you know, price stability over a long period of time. And we should not also forget that he's thinking about he spoke about helping these small, medium enterprises too, including the nano uh, industries. We, we, will, um, we, will, in get, the we will get to that, that part. We will get to that part. I want us to break it down in bits. We will get to that part. I just wanted to, okay. you know, talk about the body language of the president. But let me come to you, Punabo, quickly. Um, okay. I, I, I think the number three thing that the president mentioned in his speech was, um, you know, that he has always maintained. Um, a position that fuel subsidy must go. But I ask you, um, that Occupy Nigeria protest that happened nationwide, that was, um, you know, that had frontline opposition members, and I'm talking about when Goodluck, former President Goodluck Jonathan was president, um, can we really say that the president had always stood for um, subsidy going again? He also mentioned something that many of us have heard previous administrations. Jonathan told us that there was a cabal that was strangling, you know, the oil and gas sector. Buhari came and told us he was going to be dealing with the cabal. And now here we are again, President Tinubu, somewhat re-echoing what we've heard before. Uh, and then the average Nigerian is saying, we know this, this is old news. What are you doing to put an end to this? Subsidy has been removed, but what has changed? You made a statement. What was the question? Oh, I'm asking. I'm asking. So the president did say that he was one that had always stood for subsidy removal. And I'm saying, if we look back at what happened during the um, Occupy Nigeria protest, um, can we really give credit to that statement? Again, he's also gone about, about talking um, on the issue of subsidy removal and dealing with the cabal. And I'm asking, Miriam. what has changed now that subsidy has been removed? Owing to what the president has said, what has changed? The truth is, what, as far as I'm concerned, the president's speech is just a high blood pressure of deceptive rhetorics. You know, I always tell leaders, what he's doing right now is like, if you remember in those days, there used to be this breed of rats. They bite and they blow so that you don't even know that they're biting. That's what the president is doing. You have what you call procedural obligations. You have what you call principia. First and foremost, he came. Subsidy was supposed to end by June. So he took a rash decision. On the very first day, he took the oath of office, was the first day he removed subsidy. Without planning. That's what I'm talking about, the principle. Without planning. And there is no excuse whether Tinubu has been in government, in the system, for years. Let me state this, preliminarily, that there is no way in the world I stand to be contradicted where you don't have subsidy. Some come up with very reasonable arguments of 
the pump price of petrol is cheapest in Nigeria. It's when you talk about the economy, it's a portmanteau of issues. You don't just pick out an item and use that as an excuse. And the civilized class, you have the National Health Insurance Scheme. You have so many other buffers, such as the transport system, you have the healthcare is working, and so on. So what you pay for petrol has already been taken care of in this other sense. So when people come up to say the pump price of it, do in foreign countries, do they buy their generators? The generator is almost prohibited. When Nigerians went to Ghana and started importing generators, they were sent out. Here you buy your generator, you buy, you repair even your roads, your boreholes, the health uh, healthcare uh, system is quite expensive. You cannot walk in. Yeah, even if you don't have the money, you walk into a hospital, they will treat you, even if you have to pay later. Do we have those facilities here? No. So when you, that's why they don't joke with their taxes in foreign countries. So when you start comparing that the coupon price of produce is cheapest in Nigeria, and we also have our refineries. Did you fix the refinery? Why did you rush to remove the subsidy? Before removing the subsidy, why didn't you take these other palliatives under advisement? Before you do, you why not say, by end of December, we are going to end this subsidy? Was Buare a fool when he said, no, it wasn't going to be in his time? Because definitely is cognizant of the backlash. And he's also aware that certain measures have not been put in place. You, why must Nigerians suffer vicariously? You say you know the cabal. For eight years, Buhari was minister for petroleum. Let us get this fact straight. I just hope that the clarity of what I'm saying will penetrate the minds of people and logic capture that. For eight years, you said you know these members of this cabal. None was exposed. None was penalized for eight solid years. The same president, Buhari today, Atinibu today, is, has been a leader in this country for years. So whether he was in government or not is immaterial because that is one argument certain persons are going to do. He was the leader of the APC for eight years that Buhari ruled. You did not expose it. What he would have done first was even to expose this carbons and ensure that they are dealt with. Nigerians, to a very large extent, would have been passive. Now these cabals are there. They've gone with the fruits of their crime, and you're transferring the body on Nigerians. Is that fair? What has happened to the cabals? What has happened to the fruits of their crime? Okay, let us leave that. Now let us come to his own government. What was the essence of the rush? There was no need for that rush. Okay. As far as I go, it was just like playing to the gallery because most of the presidential candidates talked of removal of subsidy. But we are looking at the procedures. That is where a lot of. You see, the problem we have in this country are not the laws, are not the policies, but the implementation. Okay. All the right. procedures. Why are you in a rush to remove that subsidy? You, that, you, because you know that definitely if you remove the subsidy, the economy, definitely, of course, the, the economy will be transformed, whether I like it or not. What steps did you take to palliate the expected asperity? What were the steps you took? Okay, okay. And it should start from you. you should, your number of advisors, your number of your, uh, those on the enterprise, everything must start with you because you are the leader. Okay, Why open up, open up. We're going to come Why back. Did you know? We're going to come back to this. Of the, you have not talked of the refinery. Yeah. Why did you fix the refinery? We will come back to this. Because then you fix the refinery, most of this, you're going to eliminate most of the cost. Let's, that has led to the cost. All right, let's bring Tunji into the conversation. Tunji, let's, take it, let's pick it up from where Upanabo stopped. Um, the president has said that they've realized at least a trillion naira since the removal of subsidy. And just as Upanabo has said, many ha Nigerians have also questioned why these monies have not been necessarily um, put into reviving 
our uh, moribund refineries. Now, there's also an argument on the other hand that's saying these refineries and the equipments that are there are old and that they're not, you know, up to date anymore. And so, you know, reviving these refineries will take another, you know, huge chunk of the budget. But I want to know, um, also, show me also said uh, something about the fact that um, the president has, uh, you know, mapped out a lot of things in, in, in terms of giving out grains, dealing with education, agriculture, etc., etc. But what happens in the interim? for the average Nigerian, because all that we hear is the poorest of the poor. What about the other Nigerian that maybe used to be middle class but now has fallen down to the poor? And then I hear that the poor is being categorized into three now. So you have um, the poor, the poorest of the poor, and um, I think there's, there's the vulnerable. So this is where we are now. It's either you're very rich or you're poor. Um, what happens in the interim? Um, Tunji? Many harm that question should be to the president and not to me because uh, I, I, I want to align myself with the position of Opunabo uh, totally. I, 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 if you know my position before now, my position has been that the president did not do well uh, in the way and manner subsidy was removed. Yes, we may have subsidy, may be an issue, but according to the government, I don't believe that it's an issue. What is an issue is lack of the government uh, political will to fight corruption and transparency. When you know people who are corrupt, who have been given this money to do this subsidy, and they are not doing it, they are not going after them. Then you, you very, very many people say they are minor or tiny uh, few people, and those few people, the president prefer to punish the majority at the expense of the few people. I, I don't understand why we should remove subsidy when there are no plan on grant. Can you be the house that foundation? It will collapse. And what we are, what the president did was it also be the house on the on the surface, and now try after building this, after trying to. Uh, when the land, when, when, when the land like that, this thing will not start. They are not trying to patch it and see whether or not they, will, they, can, they, can, they, can, they can they can rescue it. You cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stand. What the what the president is doing now is what the president ought to have done even before before the remover. If they have done this, I, I understand some people will come and say he wasn't the one who removed the subsidy. That he, there was no budget for subsidy. Yes, I understand. There is nothing that says the president cannot come and say, my my people, I know you want subsidy to go. I also want subsidy to go, even though the president does not say so in 2012. I also want subsidy to go, but for what is on ground now, will not will, will, will cause hardship. Any group, any policy of government that will cause hardship to the people should not be implemented. Should not, no matter how good our policy is, once you know that will be, uh, it will cause hardship. What we need to do first is to remove those obstacles that will, that, will, that, will, that will make it cause hardship to the people. When you now remove those hardship, uh, those those block, you cannot implement it. Then you just come up implement the policy without any anything on ground to, to cushion the effect. So as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the president has created, the, the, created this crisis for the country. What we are facing today now was a deliberate uh, lack of good policy. The policy was not well thought out, and that was why we are having this problem. So as far as I'm concerned, all this, uh, 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 the, the, the policy or plans that have been uh, set by the president yesterday, I see it as just a campaign after the election. I see it as after thoughts. I see it as as, as just usual rhetorics, we don't lack promises. There have been promises before this, for now. So government that have gone in the past have made promises. Were they fulfilled? That is the area of problem. How, how well would this point? The president came here and talked about a student loan. What is the implementation of this student loan today? They are still working it out. So how many months will it take to, to work it out? When will the, 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 the bosses come to the president said 2024? We are talking about emergency now, when people are, are, are dying of hunger. We are talking about... Uh, uh, what's it called again? The parents talk about uh, giving people loan or whatever. Who are, how many people will get this loan? Let's even talk about the transportation system. He said they will, they will, they will bring 3,000 buses. 3,000 divided by, by, by 36. He said we'll get at least maybe 81, 81 buses. Divide it to, to local governments. A local government that has 40, 40, 40 local governments will get just two, two or one in their local government. What would that, would that one take care of? So the, we have created a lot of issues for ourselves. And what they are bringing up now will not solve it. I, for me, the subsidy remover was not properly done. And I don't, just like uh, of, of an above said, why are the people behind the subsidy not being punished? Why are they not being named? Are they bigger than the country? And so you, they find it convenient to punish mas the masses than those few people that say that they, they, they now make, make more money in, in, in this subsidy and they're not being done anything. So as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 what the president is doing now is like we are still campaigning because the president is not saying, it's just it's promises. And we, are, we have gone past promises. 
this this is where we are supposed to be seeing results or even to be saying look we have done this we have put this in place to to cushion this effect nothing has been put in place and so i was expecting the federal will come and say look i know there was no subsidy in, in, in our budget but because of the situation on that can i bring out uh, you submitted supplementary budget for six months or a year why you now bring out these policies you are thinking and then why you now put out those ones out why those ones have, have been done you now implement your subsidy remover at that time people will not complain that are today you have created a lot of hardship in the, in, in the land and it will be going to, going to be difficult for us to, to, to go out of this uh, 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 crisis that we find ourselves by by factor of a lack of good policy of the of the government it, as far as i'm concerned i see that deliberate uh, tactics to just punish the, 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 the masses just because they are looking for money because that is that is, that is the basis they are about just want they just want to get more money they don't want to get more money and not to even that money they are getting that don't, don't I, I, I don't I, I need clarity regarding that one trillion that they, they, they say they saved. I remember the last two months or a month they said the, the governance share more money. Are you, are you sure is that that money they shared, or where did they get the money that has been shared? So the one they said they they they, they got in, they shared it again. Did you see the impact of the, the, the large amount of money shared by the governors? You won't see any impact. You know, the, the money, they will remove subsidy, suffer us, and then they will take money back to some people who will send it uh, for their own personal use. As far as I'm concerned. The wrong step has been taken, and the government, can, the, go, the the president can retrace his track, go okay. back and to the to the to the to the position you were for 2029 to May, remove uh, this, uh, uh, revise your decision, and then let's start afresh. And then this policy you brought up, isn't, let's isn't, implement I mean, it. Isn't that and now give us a, give ourselves a year. Isn't that too late in the day to you know to be done? May, anyway, may, yeah, let me quickly say this. Uh, but, no, no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, you just, you have a minute because I need to go back to Shegun. Yeah, just quickly, you know. Of course, like you rightly asked, of what you is locking the staple when the steel is out. But let me quickly say, I, I, I find it infernal when the president uses the uh, uh, child bet as an example. When you are pregnant, you start preparing from the day you know you're pregnant. The hospital you go to, the baby things you're going to buy, the doctors and so on. So the issue of telling me, in this case, Nigerians were not prepared. So you're telling me that just like child bet, yeah, they pay, and after they pay, then you enjoy the pay, the glory comes. I mean, it suffers from earthly of reason and poverty of money. Okay. Because when you talk of child bet, you right. prepare for it, unless you're talking of the, uh, the child bet of a woman, okay. of a mad woman. All right. Let's... Unless that's what you're referring to. Okay. Because every reasonable human being will prepare for a child bet. All right. Everything. Let me move back to the other show. Um, there are eight palliative plans that Mr. President has put out in his speech. Um, he talked about the new minimum wage. He talked about the $125 billion for MSMEs. Uh, he talked about the 9% interest for SMEs and startups. He talked about food price stabilization, um, $200 billion now for farming, infrastructure to support, uh, infrastructural support for state, $100 billion for mass transit, and funding of student loans. Mr. Shomi, I did ask this question to my other guests, but I want to ask it to you again. These are all mid-term um, plans, or most of them long-term, if you ask me. In the interim, I just want to paint a picture, and I'm sure that you will be able to align with this picture. The average person who earns, let's take, for example, 100,000 naira, and spends about 60% of that just to pay his transportation because the price of transportation has more than doubled, if not quadrupled, the price of food in the market. Because we know how things are in this country, the moment the price of fuel or petroleum products go up, everything else skyrockets. Now, just as some of the people who have contributed on the show tonight have said, no, no cushioning effect, we don't have light, we still have to fuel our generators so we can power our businesses and, and you know, our homes. We still don't have good infrastructure. Transportation is bad. Road infrastructure is terrible. How is the president hoping to deal with these issues in the interim? Or are we just going to um, slog it out while members of the National Assembly are joyfully going to receive car keys for their bulletproof vehicle while the average person continues to languish until... Hopefully, if in the future, things stabilize. How do we hope to deal with the interim, the things that are happening now? And I'm talking about we, including you, sir. 
Yes, um, well, no doubt I heard clearly what Okunabo said and my other colleague. Uh, they have a very simplistic view of the situation. If you permit me to quickly, you know, address uh, one of them, which is about um, the identity of those who um, who are the whole tips or whichever, you will agree with me that they are not easy to come by. We, I just I remember clearly that when Buari came to power, uh, Dezani and so many other uh, people were being chased over um, brown tripping and over subsidy, uh, forced subsidy claims. Dezani went into hospital, claimed she had um, um, cancer, and she's still abroad. Some of them obtained another nationality. They are not, you are not dealing with people who are easy to deal with. And we should not forget the revelations that came out, you know, quite a lot of them about the involvement of the military and naval forces, you know, in um, bunkering. You will agree that uh, for you to, you know, to take out about three, six million liters of uh, oil a day out of Nigeria uh, through the land border, you probably need about 133,000, you know, tankers you know, uh, of uh, 45,000 liters. So 133,000. So it's practically impossible. They are not going by land. So, 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 so if, if, because, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not in any way trying to attack you, but it sounds like it's just Desiani we're talking about. And even if there were just five, even if there were just six, you're telling me that a whole country that has the Navy, that has soldiers, that has... Um, the guys who are at the borders that have the civil defense, because I mean, I might, I, I'd like to let you know that in Port Hackett, where we have these illegal bunkering, um, most of the people who have been fingered by the governor at the time were members of our security agencies. If these people are working for us and still working for these oil thieves, so-called oil thieves, you're telling me that in, in eight years that the pres former president was the petroleum minister, he could not in any way get these security men who have been aiding and abating these so-called thieves to at least point us, even if it's not to the main person, but to whoever is, you know, in the chain of command. You're telling me that if we devoted our time and energy to dealing with these people, we wouldn't have, as opposed to saying that this is the golden fruit, which is taking out subsidy. What has changed? Yeah, but you, you, re, 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 you remember one thing very clearly. Apart from the military, the connivance of um, some of our uh, security officers, including military and navy, because it's impossible, you know, to take out a whole ship tanker of uh, oil, you know, through bunkering without uh, being detected by the naval forces. So it's obvious some unscrupulous officers, not all uh, the Nigerian naval officers are unscrupulous or the Nigerian army. You know, you have always had the you know, the bad eggs. So they are obviously the ones polluting and getting our oil to neighboring countries um, of Cameroon, the J Republic, uh, Benin Republic, you know, Chad, and so on and so forth. But there's also another complexity to it. That's why I said it to be simplistic view of it. The international dimension. We've had of the arrest of Ukrainian, you know, ship and Ukrainian sailors, you know, for in the last 10 years, so many but, times. But it was and insiders. But it was ins know, I'm so sorry to talk over you, but it was insiders who welcomed the Ukrainian. If, they, if the insiders did not present it. oil, no, the Ukrainians wouldn't to come to buy, would they? No, you, you need to understand the context that we had problems in the Niger Delta. Let people say it as it is. And where were the sources of the arms? The arms were being exchanged for oil. Let us say what it is, as it is. Where were the sources of arms in the Niger Delta? They came from the oil. They were being used, you know, in a stain, in butter for the oil. That was how we, we ended up with these problems. We cannot deny that. Yes, people are doing some bunkering on the land, you know, tampering with pipes and all that. But that's not the major problem. How much more well can you still on land before being detected? The major thing is the sheep. You know, when you load a ship, a tanker, a cheap tanker, you load one alone, you know how much that is. And that is taken to neighboring countries, sold or taken to Ukraine in exchange for arms. That is the problem which the Navy has to deal with, which the Nigerian army has to deal with, in a way that in the Niger Delta today, we have a very formidable, highly, heavily harmed, you know, people, uh, militia there. The same thing with Boko Haram. Where do you think they get the arms from? 
Where do they get the money to buy the arms from? They are colluding with some people, I agree. But the fact of the matter is, we need to take a tough decision in order to hurt these characters who are not only creating economic nightmare, but a security mess for the country. And that is why the removal of that subsidy has dealt a major blow to these characters, because they will not be able, it will no longer be economical for them to be able to do what they are doing. I agree it's creating pains. I feel the pain too, just like every other person. I know how much poorer I am today. I know that. But the fact of the matter is there is no gain without pain. We have to go through a process where you already have a rotting economy. You need to go through a surgical process in order to get it better. There is no good time or bad time to remove subsidy. We are already down. We were using 96% of our income to pay debt, to, to service debt, not to repay the debt, to service debt. Only 4% left. We started printing money. A government warned us, uh, the whole country about it. We started printing Naira. Do we have to wait till the whole country collapse before the government can do something about it? I think there's no good time to do it. I think the right time to do it is now. And when you want to take out cancer, you have to do a surgical operation. And that's what I believe Tinubu has done. The idea that we should go back to the era of then suddenly and then come back again, but, you know, like a game. Is that yeah, my brother, can I, can I, can I come in? Can, can I come in? Can, 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 can we let, can we let, please, 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 gentlemen, can we let him finish? What he's saying, he did not no, interrupt. No, you. I just have to be yes. No, no, no. Just please, can he land, and then you can take it up from there. Please, let's 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 just allow him finish. Now, what about so, so the idea that we can go back to the subsidy regime, and then Tinubu will now come with a six months program when we know at the end of the day that will not work. We know what would happen. Trade unions will go on strike the moment you want to do that and pressure the government. You know, to abandon it. That happened to Buhari. We can't deny that. There are, there are always pledges left, right, and center. But nobody would talk about how do you pay, how do you rescue the country. For instance, if you take away Forex, I agree with some of your submission on the fact that we need to fix the refinery. If we can get a Polaco refinery working by October and you have worry refinery working in January, that would take a long sum, a huge amount of money. About uh, 25, 28% of what of the pressure that we are facing on forex. So isn't that better? Isn't that better than sharing 10,000 or 50,000 naira to Nigerians? How many 50,000 can get us I out of the situation the, that we are in? I would right never now. support the idea of sharing money. That is better. Let us fix the system. They are working on it on on that system. What is working on that? We are hoping they will stick to the timetable of October. Let us improve productivity, uh, particularly through agriculture. Okay. Once we're able to bring down the cost of food, we're able to moderate, you know, um, the, the cost of um, transportation through gas-powered buses, okay. then things will be a lot better All than right. what it is now. All right, let me let me allow Punabo to come in and then, of course, cost Tinju. Uh, I just want to ask my brother, so we have a simple question. When, if you have a case of armed robbery in your house and you suspect the gate man. What are you expecting to do? Is it not to arrest and grill the gate man? Do we, are you going to move out of that building? Already you have identified the part. When you talk of the Niger Delta, no problem. Yes, you say the Niger Deltas are involved, everything for arms and all those stuff. But can you please hear me? Can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I involved. Now, is it my responsibility to arrest them? Or to end it, is it not that the Navy? Is the Navy not part of the government? What's the work of the Navy? What's the work of the civil defense? That's what we are talking about. The same thing with those involved in the oil subsidy theft. And I am telling you that because there is high level collusion in this whole thing, because the, the former president was the minister for petroleum. Now you are talking of subsidy, you are still paying turnaround maintenance for refineries that are now working. And you could not even arrest and investigate all those that received the money for the turnaround maintenance. So you're off, you can, no president can extricate himself. Now, like I said, if you, you, your house is being invaded by thieves, are you going to move out of the house and close that lock, lock, lock up that building? No. What are you going to do? You're going to investigate. And that's what you're saying. Because Nigerians are the ones suffering for the sins of a microscopic few. 
So what you would have just done was first and foremost, yes, some of them are running like the Zeni, but you don't have just the Zeni. You have and the Dezeni that is running away, they've been confiscating all her property. Everything, including her jewelries and so on. Now, what of these other ones? We are just hearing of the Zeni. And that is because the Zeni belongs to the position party. Are you telling me now that it just the PDP members were the ones that are being responsible for that, for the subsidy fraud? No. So the, even in the case of subsidy fraud, there's a lot of politics. Nigeria just wants transparency. That is all we want. Because there is nowhere in this world. It is ridiculous that we are even exporting our crude to get refined product in return. It is so ridiculous. It's unheard of. But because the federal government is fully involved in this fraud, and that's why they are trying to add certain characters. Because once you I'm mention sorry, I, I want to take you on what you just B, said. Hold B on. She will mention C. She will mention open up, open up. I want to take you on. You just said that the federal government is in on it. Where did you get that information? And when you say the federal government, you're, you're also implicating Mr. President. Um, I will, what do you I mean will by you, this? If that is the question, I will tell you now. It's please, simple. Please, it's please, simple. It's where you got this information and why you think it's that. It's simple now. It's simple. Just one minute. You just ask now because you soon tell me that there is no time. It's simple. <laughs> now, the federal government, first of all, I just, I just explained it. My brother, I elucidated on that. I said, well, who pays for the turnaround maintenance? First of all, who is the oil minister? The president. Who pays for the turnaround maintenance? Did you get the result for that payment? What did you do? Turn around maintenance and no refinery has been turned around. Turn around. So what did you, what steps did you take to recover the money and to also penalize all those that got the contract for turn around maintenance? Nothing. You also claim that you knew those involved in this subsidy. Why did you not name and shame them and also prosecute them? That is Eddie and Abeti. You're also an accomplice. Even if somebody steals and you keep quiet, you know that Mr. A committed murder, you, take, you are an accomplice to, 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 to that crime. Because it is your duty, it's incumbent on you to expose such a person. You can't, and you're the Minister for Petroleum. So the federal government cannot extricate itself from whatever problem. Okay. Because, like, under a passenger, we're not just talking about party. Because, you know, I tell, I've always told you I don't belong to any political party. Under a passenger was um, uh, uh, Minister for Petroleum. But Buhari was Minister for Petroleum. So these are persons that ought to to be prosecuted. Come and explain to us. This Tinubu uh, just got it. You shut up. Come and explain to us what happened to our oil uh, under your reign. We want Nigeria. Like, if you don't stop, then you're also an accomplice. Uh, uh, you are you're aided and abetted. Okay. All right. That is it. So All right. the deductive reason, you don't you don't need God to come and tell you. All right. And they were the ones who were paying for the turn around maintenance. Let's get Tunji. What happened to the money? Let's get Tunji's thoughts on this. Tunji, I know that you've been holding your breath, but go ahead now. No, I, I want to disagree specifically with uh, Mr. Soumi on some issues. Uh, saying the fact, the, the point being raised by Mr. Soumi that we are looking at it from the simplicity angle, angle is just an indictment on the, on, 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 the, on the government. Is to say that, look, government lack capacity to deal with people who are making the country. Um, uh, who are repeating the uh, for country of their money of corruption? And you will notice the, pre the president, current president, have been talking all this all this while. He has not talked about corruption or fight against those who are causing this corruption. He has never thought about it. Not he for has one never day. said anything about not it. Not for one day. For, for, he has never thought about it. And then, so if you are saying that we have about 10, 5 people, other people who are making our subsidiary mon money, and you are saying they are bigger than the country because they are powerful, are you saying so they are more powerful than 200 million Nigerians? So it's better for 20 million Nigerians to suffer than for you to uh, contact. Uh, to, to, to. This time, you are not talking about, I'm not even talking about the past. Now, you are, the complaint is that subsidy money is not, is not being used for subsidy. So people are stealing it. Okay, now that you are there and you don't want people to steal, steal it, monitor it, supervise it, give it to people who will not steal it, and ensure that, look, when you give them the money, they account for it. And, and I will not agree, also agree that the fact that the subsidy has, has been removed. There will be no all all all, all TV in there or all stealing or whatever in the in ledger data again. They are still stealing our oil. So the fact that you have removed subsidy does not mean they won't steal it again. So those people who are still doing that are still doing it. So as far as I'm concerned, the government uh, did not there was no planning. There was no planning at all. That, that was that, that was the problem. And the, the, the fact that the, there was no planning is what is causing all this issue. So government is, is not showing that he has the capacity to handle this situation. They are just looking for shortcuts. And the short cut is that let's push it to the to the, to the masses. They will have only been, we will just tell them to be to, to endure. They'll be enduring during when I was in primary school, I was told this endure. It, 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 it no pay no gain. During my uh, uh, when we get to mini, uh, 
endure. They will not gain no pain. Baba Buhari for the eight years we have been told to endure, no gain no pain. How do I continue to, en to endure and I won't see any gain? After, after, I won't see any, any gain after, after pain. I can't endure anything longer. Me, okay. I will not be part of endurance. Okay. I want to see work. I, the policy was not put in place to come and ask us to endure. We, are not, right. we did not put government in place to come and give us hardship. Government, any policy of uh, government is bringing out a policy. And from me, from me statement, I already knew that this policy will cause hardship. Why are you bringing this out? Okay. You All right. Out policy and say, be hardship on May, oh. Many people misinterpret no pain, no gain. No pain, okay. no gain. If you don't read, you will not pass. That okay. Is All, right. No All, right. All right. All right. All right, gentlemen. You cannot come and bring them. You cannot come and destroy my building. Tell me, build another one. Tell me, no pain, okay. no gain. Right. That's a misinterpretation of no pain, no All gain. All right, because we're almost running out of time, I'm going to give everybody yes, three minutes each. I'm going to go back to Mr. Shomi. Um, let's talk about solutions, because like I said initially, the president has come up with what he thinks are solutions that will help us uh, build back the economy and get back to where, you know, we're supposed to be. Um, but like I kept insisting in the interim, um, many of us, have, many of you pointed out, you know, some of the mistakes and how we kicked off this whole subsidy removal program, uh, how we went about it. So what happens now if you were all to supposedly sat on the table with Mr. President and his advisors, what would be the key areas that need to be dealt with right away that would one way or the other change the course of things? There are a few things that many people would applaud Mr. President for. Um, the fact that um, certain things have been done in terms of our foreign exchange and um, our, uh, able, us being able to use our... Um, our cards outside of the country as they were shut down before. And of course, many would even say that the stock market has um, experienced some sort of boost. Um, that, that still is uh, somewhat debatable. But I want to start with you, Mr. Shoumi. Um, in all of the things that Mr. President had said in his speech, very interesting things, very applaudable. Um, but where is the sucker for the average Nigerian? What's the takeaway for the average Nigerian? And I'm thinking, it's you and I right now, are the average Nigerian? Well, um, unfortunately, there is no easy way out of this problem. What it seems very clear to everybody is, like all the top leading presidential aspirants, agreed at the election, you know, during the campaign, that they would all have to remove it. So there is no way out. If there is no way out, what we don't do is you, you don't keep digging. So we have actually tried, you know, to to retract from you know, full out of the hole which we are in now. And that is what Tinubu is trying to do by cutting off the subsidy so that we don't keep, you know, digging. Unfortunately, this is inflicting untold, you know, hardships on so many Nigerians. Um, but with the steps taken by the government so far, particularly on transport, agriculture, assistance for small to medium um, um, businesses, if they all come to fruition, then we will be on the right path, you know, to healing um it's going to get bad before getting better and um, we are at that bad stage now it will start getting better in, in, within in the one, next six to nine in months. one minute when i mean i i like that every administration comes with its own slang its own you know um i don't know that that whole thing that we say to just make nigerians feel like there's some sort of hope um, that, oh, it, it has to get bad on, before it gets better. How long is it going to be bad for? We need to know. You need to give us a timeline. Is it going to be bad for the whole eight years? And then, of course, we'll pass the mat baton to the next person who's going to come and inherit the problems that this administration has caused. Because it seems to me that that is now the new modus operandi. We saw it under the Bahari administration, and it's looking like, oh, don't worry, we're going to see what we will do about it. And then... Of course, the, 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 we dilly-dally, and then the, the elections come, and then we hand over to the next administration. So Nigerians obviously want to know how long they're going to be in this for, and if there's really um, you know, the willpower to change things. So do you have any idea if this government really is willing to you know, follow through with all their promises? Well, from all projections, we should start pulling out of this uh, mess we are in. Uh, in. In another nine months to one year, we will begin to see uh, improvement. The uh, investment in agriculture will become will, will begin to yield fruits, and we will see increased productivity, not only in GDP but in real terms. You know, in terms of. 
the uh, improvement in the living standards of the people, the country will be better off for it. Uh, the forex will stabilize at a point which will help businesses and lead to more increase in employment. But I don't think this will all this will be achieved in less than a year. We're looking at a year, a year and a half maximum. Okay, let me come to you, Opana. But um, we've always struggled as a country with trust deficit when it comes to our leadership because of you know the past experiences and so Nigerians are finding it very difficult to believe anything that any politician says and it's not just about the um, APC administration nor the Tinubu administration it's been a problem over the years now in dealing with the trust deficit here uh, as we speak um, how can we trust that this government will deliver on its mandate again let's not forget about the fact that the opposition's um, party, uh, the PDP, um, has spoken on this speech. In fact, I'd like to quote um, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar directly. He said that um, the nationwide broadcast was a waste of time and it was deceptive. Um, is this also, could we say that this is part of the fact that we have a trust deficit? And uh, uh, could it also be um, add to the fact that, you know, there's so many question marks around how Mr. President came to be? Well, how it came to be, I mean, it might be tangential, but I don't think that is in the cops because we are not now talking of the policies. And um, I would have opted for reversion to uh, the status quo anti bellum. In other words, that is a soft But that's too late in the day. But course. definitely, that's why I said, I said definitely that will be batting on the sticky meetings. I mean, it's definitely not realizable. can realize it. So what's my advice right now, painfully though, will be for the president to ensure that all these policies and promises he made are brought to fruition and prone to two as quickly as possible. Because I can tell you that Nigerians are asphyxiated. You know, we, we live in a society where we practice socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. Those that are the bottom of the pecking order are, the, are those that are really feeling the pain. Not the academic assembly members. It is ridiculous. It's, it's, it's highly provocative. First of all, who is going to kill a National Assembly member? If, you're, if, you're, if your life is in danger, then you're an arm robber. You have a questionable mind. Okay. That's the truth. If who's going to kill a National Assembly member, they're going to die. But it is quite insensitive. All right. So I believe that, and the, Mr. President should also cut down on the number of uh, appointees. All right. You know, we're out of time. 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 We're out we're out and of time. Sure I, I need to quickly ask Tunji this actually, question. I'm sorry, Bunabo, we're out actions. of time. Tunji, okay. in, Tunji right. in 60 seconds, um, the NLC is saying they're not going to backpedal on going for this strike because they did not get what they wanted. Um, even if the president has promised that they're going to increase you know, minimum wage, they're still not buying it. Um, how, do, how do you think this administration is going to manage to get the trust of the people quickly? Uh, firstly, it's not, it's not strike, it's protest. So they are not going on protest, strike. I beg your protest. pardon, on the protest, yes. So and, and for me, and for me, like I said, to get the trust of the of, of the government is going to be difficult. I don't even know how to go, how to go about it. I do. I have lost trust in uh, government. Whenever they promise, I don't. I don't believe it because I've I had so many, I'm over forty. I've had so many promises. None has been. So most of them have not been fulfilled. So as far as I'm concerned, the only solution to this problem, as far as I'm concerned, and I don't see any difficulty in it, is to go back to the status quo. Go back, we draw the fascist decision. But we cannot Let's, go back. So we, we can't, can't, we, can't, we, are we now. can't, we can't, we can't. There's no can't. going back, and the president had said that succinctly. We can't, we can't, because it's causing hardship. When we are when we are paying subsidy, the hardship is not as good as this. So it shows that subsidy will remove the without plan. If you are building a house and it has gone to the, 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 the roof and you discover that the foundation was not properly done, are you going to leave it? Are you not going to destroy it and, 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 and start it afresh? So as far as I'm concerned, that is the only way out. When okay. we do that, we can now, that one year, two years, that's what we're talking about, All right. we can now wait for it. If okay. One year is a very long time, even one month, for people to survive. Okay. We're talking about one year, two years, to wait for, for, for what is not even sure it, well, it, it, it materializes. Well, gentlemen, we have to go. Like they, I like think they, that this is like an ongoing they, conversation. Like Unfortunately, we have to go. We have to go. This is a very, this is a conversation that's going to continue, unfortunately. Um, well, all that we can do is just hope that uh, things will get better. 
um, in the short term. I want to say thank you. Um, Upanabo Inko, Taya, Biodu, Show Me, and Tunji Abdulamin. Thank, thank you, and you so uh, gentlemen. Thank you, my colleague. Thank, thank, thank you, you for you. having me. All right. Thank, thank you, you. Thank for you. joining us tonight. Well, that's the show. Tomorrow we'll be back talking for development. It's been Plus Policies. But don't forget, you can go on our YouTube, Plus TV Africa, to follow up on all our previous episodes. I am Mary Anakon. Do have a pleasant evening.